Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio, and this video will show you how to select the current limiting resistor for an LED. Let's start with the simplest case of one LED. You'll need to look up two values for the LED you want to use, the typical forward voltage and the typical forward current. This information is usually available on the website where you bought the LED or on the datasheet. A typical 5mm LED like these will be rated for 20 milliamps and somewhere between 2 and 4 volts depending on the color. After you've chosen your LED, you're going to need to choose a power supply. I'm going to use this red LED as an example, which is rated at 20 milliamps and 2 volts. Now, there are many other types of batteries available, like 9 volts or coin cells, but I'm going to use these AA battery holders as an example. A single alkaline AA battery will provide 1.5 volts. When you combine them in series, the voltages add. So, two of them gives you 3 volts, three of them gives you 4.5 volts, and four of them gives you 6 volts. I want to choose the voltage that is as low as possible, but still higher than the forward voltage drop rating of the LED. So 1.5 volts isn't enough because my LED won't light up. 3 volts is fine. 4.5 volts or 6 volts will still work, but these voltages are actually higher than I need, and they're going to be wasting power by burning extra voltage off in my current limiting resistor. So the 2 by AA battery pack would be optimal here. So now it's time to do some math. I have my 2 by AA battery pack, which provides 3 volts. I have my LED, which has a forward voltage drop of only 2 volts. I can't connect the battery pack directly to the LED, or it'll have too much voltage, which will cause too much current to flow, burning the LED out. This is where my current limiting resistor comes in. I put the resistor in series with the LED. This will limit the current flowing through the LED and get the voltage down to the appropriate level. Now, it's a common misconception that this resistor needs to come before the LED to drop the voltage and limit the current to prevent the LED from burning out. That's actually not true. Since they are in series, you can reverse this and have the LED first. I'm not going to go into that in detail here. I have another video linked in the corner that you can click on if you want to see the explanation for that. But for now, we're just going to talk about how do we choose the resistance R of this resistor. So let's think about what else we know in this circuit. We know that in this case with my red LED, the voltage drop over the LED is going to be 2 volts. I also know that I want the current through the LED to be 20 milliamps. Since the resistor is in series with the LED, I also know that the current through the resistor is going to be 20 milliamps. And I know for that a resistor, Ohm's law applies, which is V equals IR, or voltage equals current times resistance. So, I know all of the voltages and I know the current in this circuit. I can use this equation to calculate my required resistance. Rearrange that to be R equals V over I, where V is the voltage drop across the resistor and I is the current through the resistor. So in this case, that voltage drop is going to be 3 volts minus 2 volts over my current, which is 20 milliamps or 0 0.02 amps. And that gives me a resistance of 50 ohms. Now, resistor values are a topic for another video. If you look at my tray of resistors here, you'll see that the closest thing I have is 47 ohms, but that works just fine. And if I didn't have something close to that value, there's a way to create other resistor values by combining resistors in series and parallel. And again, I have another video on that topic. Now, you'll find that you can actually get away with a pretty big range. So here I've switched to four green LEDs because I didn't have enough reds, and I have 10, 47, 68, and 100 ohm resistors. And visually, there's really not that much difference between the three on the right here. The one with the 10 ohm resistor is starting to get a little discolored, possibly because it's starting to burn out. Now, again, visually, there's not that much difference, but if I take my multimeter here and measure each one of these individually, I can see that I'm getting about 10 milliamps through the one with the 100 ohm resistor, 13 and a half milliamps with the 68 ohm resistor, 18 milliamps with the 47 ohm resistor, and almost 70 milliamps with the 10 ohm resistor. So that's too much. That's probably going to decrease the lifetime of this LED. But these other three, there's really not that much of a visual change in brightness. So if you can reduce the current by 50% or so, then you can really extend your battery life if that extra brightness isn't that important to you. So again, you're doing this calculation to get a ballpark resistor value, but it's really not the end of the world if you have to pick something a little bigger or a little smaller.
Okay, so you might be wondering, if I want to put a bunch of LEDs in parallel, do they each actually need their own individual resistor, or can I get away with using just one resistor? And the answer is yes, up to a certain extent. And to explain that, we need to do a little more math. So in this circuit, we still have our 2 by AA battery pack, and we've added three more LEDs in parallel to the original one. The LEDs all have the same forward voltage drop, so the voltage at this point hasn't changed. That's still 2 volts. And the voltage here is still 3 volts, so if I still have the 47 ohm resistor in place, then my current through this resistor hasn't changed much. It's still about 20 milliamps. The problem then is that this current is going to split four ways between these four LEDs because they're in parallel, so I'm only getting about 5 milliamps through each LED. It might be hard to see on the camera, but these are looking a little dim. I can verify that again with my multimeter, where I see that I'm only getting 5 milliamps through one of the LEDs. So if I actually want 20 milliamps through each of these LEDs, that means I'm going to need 4 by 20 milliamps or 80 milliamps through that resistor. That's fine, and I can just do the same calculation I had before, where I start with Ohm's law, V equals IR, rearrange to solve for the resistance, R is going to be 3 volts minus 2 volts over 80 milliamps, and in this case that gives me 12.5 ohms. Again, I don't have a 12.5 ohm resistor, I have a 10 ohm resistor, so I'll call that close enough. If I swap the 10 ohm resistor in for my 47 ohm resistor, I should see the LEDs get brighter and my current will go up. In this case, from about 5, amps, 5 milliamps up to 16 milliamps. Where I have to be careful here is with the power dissipated in this resistor. I know that for a resistor, the power dissipated is equal to the current squared times the resistance, or P equals I squared R. So if I know the power rating of the resistor and I know the resistance, I can rearrange this equation to solve for the maximum allowable current, or I max equals the square root of P over R. In this case, I know that the power rating of this resistor is a quarter watt, or 0.25 watts, and the resistance is 10 ohms, not 12.5, because I didn't have a 12.5 ohm resistor. So if I calculate that, it gives me a maximum current of about 150 milliamps. If I have 20 milliamps per LED, that's only going to give me a maximum of about 7 LEDs that I can add in parallel before I exceed the power rating of the resistor. So if you need more LEDs than that, it's a good idea to give each LED its own individual resistor in series. Another reason to use individual resistors for each LED is if you want to combine different color LEDs in parallel. Here I have red, green, yellow, and blue LEDs in parallel, and you'll see that the red LED is much brighter than the others, and the blue LED isn't lighting up at all, because it requires more than 3 volts. So to figure this out, I now have my 4.5 volt battery and 4 LED resistor pairs in parallel. The red, green, and yellow LEDs all have a forward voltage drop of about 2, but the blue has a higher voltage drop of about 3.2 volts, and I want 20 milliamps through all of them, so I just do the calculation for each resistor individually, because the voltage at each of these points at the top of the circuit is all the same. That's going to be 4.5 volts, and then the voltage on the other end of each resistor is going to be determined by the respective LED. So for the red, green, and yellow LEDs, I have a similar calculation to what I had before, where I start with Ohm's law. I rearrange to solve for the required resistor value, R equals 4.5 minus 2 over 0 0.02 amps, and that's going to give me 125 ohms in this case. And when I do that for the blue LED, I get R equals 4.5 minus 3.2 over 0 0.02, because I want the current to be the same, and in that case I get 65 ohms, so I'm just going to use a smaller resistor for the blue LED. And when I try that, you can see now that all four of my LEDs light up. Let's go over one more scenario. Say you already have a 4x AA battery pack and you don't want to have to buy another one, but you also don't want to burn off unnecessary power in your resistor by dropping more voltage than you need to. In this case, you can combine LEDs in series. So now you have a battery pack providing 6 volts, you still only need a single resistor, and you can put the two LEDs in series with each other so their voltage drops add up.
In this case, I've combined a red LED and a blue LED, so I'm going to have a voltage drop of 2 volts and 3.2 volts, which, since they're in series, are going to add to a total voltage drop of 5.2 volts across both the LEDs. Now, I still want 20 milliamps through both of the LEDs. They're in series, so they share the same current. Be careful not to accidentally double the current to 40 milliamps. This is still only 20 milliamps. I do the same calculation I had before, where I know the voltage drop across this resistor. It's 6 volts on this side. It's 5.2 volts on this side. So yet again, I have V equals IR, which I rearranged to solve for the resistance. R equals V over I equals 6 volts minus 5.2 volts divided by 20 milliamps. And in this case, that's going to give me 40 ohms. As usual, I don't have a 40 ohm resistor, but I'm going to call 47 ohms close enough. And when I plug that in, I will see that both of my LEDs light up. And again, I have minimized the size of my resistor here. If I had put these LEDs in parallel, I would have needed a much larger resistor, and then I would have dissipated more power in the resistor, which is just being converted into heat instead of being converted into light by the LEDs. So if you've watched this far, I hope you found this video useful. If you have a question, feel free to leave a comment, and I will try to get back to you. If you'd like to learn more about electronics as a hobby or for school, please check out the other videos on my channel.